Okay, we have this weird kind of situation today where there's a company that made a claim, BYD, that they have a five-minute charging of a battery, and it really has sent the anti-EV crowd in a tailspin. They don't know what to make of it except just kind of saying it can't possibly be true despite us having evidence. So today we have on the show Palm Guy Australia, um, at least that's what people in the comments call him. I don't know even what that means, but... Uh, here he is upset about the BYD five-minute charging ability. If you're vaguely interested in the EV nonsense at the moment, you cannot have failed to notice the screeching headlines from the mainstream media proclaiming that the holy grail of EVs has been discovered. Yes, finally we can charge an EV in the same time it takes to refuel a regular combustion car. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's just uh, the accent or the different culture here, but the attitude is just, uh, the tone is, is not, uh, not appreciated here. And the one funny thing about this is when he says, uh, if you're at all interested or whatever, yeah, it, I mean, his whole brand and channel is around bashing EVs. So I think he's probably the most interested. So these are actually good things for him, which is kind of a funny way to look at this. But uh, he's upset about this, and I don't know why, because this was a chief complaint of him and many others that EVs didn't charge fast enough. Here they are doing it, and yet they're not happy still. The final hurdle to mass EV adoption has been overcome, and we can all disappear with our rainbows and unicorns into the net zero distance. All right, he gets it. There we go. Time to go home, everyone. Thanks for watching. Trouble is, the story is pure fantasy. And none of the stories mention why it is pure fantasy. Probably because they don't have any science understanding beyond year three physics. Okay, I'm intrigued. I don't know what this guy does for a living besides make these videos and use clip art logos on his shirt, but let's hear more. Those of you who have watched this channel for any length of time will know that I've coined the phrase charging conundrum to explain this particular problem. You coined that phrase, really? I feel like I've heard that before you ever posted a video. It's not something that combustion cars are prone to, but EVs will always suffer from it. If you want to charge an EV in five minutes, you will need 12 times the power it takes to charge it in an hour. This BYD announcement relies on having a charger that can deliver 1,000 kilowatts of power, or one full megawatt for one car. So that's not the first company to make that announcement. Tesla has this with the semi truck. I don't know if that's a real thing yet, but the they had an announcement years ago called the Mega Charger, and uh, that was what they were claiming. Nissan also already has this out there. So maybe he's confused about how technology works in progression of technology, but this isn't like the first time that anyone's ever said this. As I've said in previous videos, it's not easy for the layman or lay person to grasp just how much electricity is required to charge an EV. I'll give him that. It, EVs definitely consume a lot of electricity. And before I go on, I need to thank today's sponsor, Recurrent, who helps people like you and me get the most money for our EV when it comes time to sell, and also helps you understand the health of your battery. A data-driven company that I thoroughly am jealous that I didn't come up with this idea first. Here's how it works. Over on cars.com, I'm looking for a used Tesla. A lot of deals out there right now. As I scroll down, I see the you know deal rating and some star rating, et cetera, et cetera. But notice that all of these also have this little EV battery rating pill next to them. And when I click on that pill, I get more information about the range and the rating of that EV battery because that's obviously the most important part. And when I click on that little link right there, bang, it takes me over to Recurrent and I get to see all the details about this car's range, the battery, what I can really expect based on my location, how much cost it is, everything like that. So tremendous, tremendous value. And if you are an owner like I am, you can see this data for your own EV once it's connected there. Of course, they work with Tesla, but they also have Rivian and a whole bunch of other EVs that they can connect to and give you insights like these. So really, really good. And there's a new feature there you may have just seen in the middle. Sell your EV private party. We all know that private party sales are going to give you kind of a better value typically than trading it in to a CarMax or somewhere else. But if you want to do that, it's always been a difficult. There's a big pain of it. But now Recurrent has partnered with Private Auto to help you sell your EV privately and get even more value for it. It is a really tech forward way of organizing the whole private party sale. You have the app, you set it up, you can share the link online, other people create an account. Then you can organize the test drives and how to meet up and even transfer the funds and get the bill of sale all handled directly inside of their app for a very low fee. 
So if you're an existing EV owner, absolutely you need to sign up for Recurrent today to get the health and information about your battery. Or if you're looking to buy or sell one, you can also use Recurrent to make sure that you're getting the best deal possible. And if you are selling your EV, like I am very soon, then you're gonna to wanna to use this integration with Private Auto as well. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and get on my newsletter because I am gonna be selling my EV, I'm not gonna say which one, very soon, and I'm gonna do it here with Recurrent through Private Auto. So make sure if you wanna be the first to know about any of that, you can get it on my email list and also sign up for Recurrent at bit.ly slash meet dash recurrent. All right, now back to the video. The kettle is probably one of the most power hungry devices in your home that and a two bar electric fire, and they both draw about two kilowatts. But some of these charges are hundreds of times more power than that. Sure, yeah, uh, standard in the US right now is around 250 kilowatts uh, for Tesla chargers, and I've seen Electrify America, I think has ones upwards of 350, which I don't know if any companies can really take advantage of because you need the 800 volt architecture. So when you when you look at watts and kilowatts, it's always just math between uh, amps and volts. And so the, the higher the voltage, from what I understand, the more efficient it is to actually send the energy in. So this is where a lot of it gets really deep into how, you know, electronics work. To me, it's no surprise a company or uh, sorry, a country, uh, China started like basically down this path in 2000, 25 full years ago. So their technology is just blowing everyone else out of the water. So this this is no surprise to me at all uh, that they're there and that they have working demos of this, which I'll get to in a second. But then I'll, of course, finish with what I really think is is, is the, the missing link between his argument against this and all the other folks like him, the cardigans of the world and whatever. A single Tesla supercharger stall might provide 350 kilowatts or 175 kettles all going at the same time. I love that analogy. I, I might, might, might uh, take that from him. But a one megawatt charger, we're talking 500 kettles on full power. A one megawatt transformer, or more correctly, a one megavolt amp MVA transformer, is the size of a small garden shed. And that's just for one car. But sites like The Guardian don't know one end of a megawatt from the other. Let's not forget that, at least in the US, 80% uh, of charging happens almost exclusively at home. So the amount of chargers you need like this and the infrastructure to support them is far less than what people think. The way that these guys try to frame this is that you need the same amount of gas stations that you do EV chargers. And that's just not true at all. You need at least 80% fewer. And I mean, we're already kind of there, at least in California. California, we're at over 50% more EV chargers than we have gas stations. It's one of those things where it's completely blown out of proportion, the, net, the need for this, considering we already have electricity everywhere. If you lived in a country or a place that didn't have electricity at all, and you were trying to do this, yeah, that would be a huge hurdle to clear. But the fact that we already have electricity just means we need to tap into it because the same place you charge your phone, you can charge your car from. So they don't even mention this small point in their gushing article. Chinese EV maker BYD says fast charging system could be as quick as filling up a tank. Yeah, that's what they say. And we have a video of it. So we'll get there. BYD unveils platform with charging power of 1000 kilowatts which would be twice as fast as Tesla supercharging. He seems so confused by this, but he says he's an engineer. I'm not sure why. It seems weird that this really seems to have sent him down this, this spiral of uncertainty and confusion. He seems lost. Breathless, as the reporting of EV stories always is, the reporter has no clue just how much electricity a megawatt really is. To them, it's just numbers. But in the real world, a megawatt will power 500 homes quite easily. 500 homes? I mean, maybe a peak of it will, but uh, I don't know what homes use over there, but homes here use quite a bit more energy, I suppose. Uh, or maybe he lives in like a condo or something. I know in Australia, it's a lot of high rises and very dense areas outside of uh, the big suburbs. So maybe maybe that's what he's talking about. But that seems like uh, not, a, not a lot of energy to, uh, to, to power homes here. And providing this amount of power for even a few charging stalls will need a frighteningly expensive connection to the grid. They're trying to use emotion, right? Frighteningly expensive. What do you care, right? The, the article here is talking about a breakthrough in technology. It didn't say this is all gonna be sunshine and rainbows. That's what you're assuming when you read that article. And that's the fear that people like him are trying to, to drum up here. At the end of the day, you pay for you know the energy that you consume, and so you know, and most people aren't even going to ever use one of these. So it's kind of a silly thing. There are plenty of things out there that 
are frighteningly expensive or just over the top, but we still just handle them and deal with it anyways. It's one of those things where the economics and the, the technical side of it aren't the same thing, right? If you can make the economics work, the rest of it, who cares? And so that's what they're working on. And China has the ability to make the economics work far better than any other country in the world. And that's ignoring the demand charges that the grid will impose on these massive power draws. If you think public fast charging is expensive right now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Again, you don't have to use one of these chargers. I have no idea what the actual costs are going to be. He's not mentioning that either. So this is just pure speculation and fear mongering at this point. While this kind of flashy demonstration works in simple conditions, scaling it up is virtually impossible. Right. This is where he's showing his lack of knowledge because you're talking about um, a country with huge resources dedicated to pushing electrification and renewables. And you as a single person thinking that you're somehow smarter than them is the most entitled viewpoint I think someone like this could have. Because at the end of the day, there are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes and a lot of people that just incrementally make things better. And that's how we get technology that, you know, from five years ago looks completely alien. And so he's really downplaying that and just thinking because maybe he doesn't understand how it works or how it's possible. It can't possibly, you know, come to fruition. And yet we have a real world demo. All right, I'm just going to jump out of that because he really has nothing to say of any value there. There's not really much to debunk. Here's the story. Uh, this is on the uh, carnewschina.com. BYD has their 1,000 kilowatt or one megawatt charger, adding uh, two kilometers of range per second. I don't know, those are kind of weird numbers there. But the thing that was cool was you have an actual demo of this here. Like, check out this video. Now, the interesting thing about this video is that the screen you see on the left is not an illustration, there's a camera in a car off off screen here, out of frame, that is charging. So they're showing the actual event happening. It's not like just a, a simulation that they recorded or did in uh, After Effects or something like that. And so you can see it starts here right around uh, seven and a half, uh, seven point six percent charge. And as you'll go, you'll see at the bottom left here, uh, the amount of, of actual range being added. And so down over here, yeah, it's getting up almost a thousand kilowatts, almost a, a megawatt. And you can just see the percentage screaming up ahead. And we're only one minute in, if you look on the right side here. So this thing here, and you can see, yeah, there, there's a shot. Let me just rewind that. This is how you know it's a camera because the guy pans around and is kind of hand holding what you're seeing on this left screen. So it's kind of amazing, right? So it hit that peak of nearly a kilowatt and then it started to die down. Um, and as you go here, we're at three minutes and we went from 7% uh, up to, you know, just about 40% in 47% in three minutes. Uh, and then you get here, we're at four and a half minutes. I mean, we added 50% charge in four minutes and 30 seconds there. Um, and so that's kind of wild to me. That right there is incredible. And yes, there are challenges to rolling out such a technology, but that's why I think all these anti-EV folks are in such a tailspin about this because it's a real world demo. This wasn't just an announcement about a breakthrough of a future thing. This is like actually physically happening right in front of our eyes and we have video evidence of it. So it's hard to refute that, right? You can argue around it by saying, oh, it's going to be hard to scale. The technology is difficult, blah, 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 all that. Fine. But they're doing it. But honestly, I don't think it matters. The idea of a five minute charge, as cool as that is, you know, Palm guy there is correct. There will be a slow, slow rollout, uh, a lot of expense, a lot of that stuff that the company's going to eat to kind of just be the leader, right? That's one thing. So whether or not this comes to fruition is just available everywhere in places that allow Chinese EVs, like most of the world, but not where I live in the US. Um, it, it's a, that's a, a separate question. I still argue that the whole thing is unnecessary because, in fact, even in the U.S., we have an EV company that has something that can do a zero to 100 percent charge even faster. And it was demoed and shown over a decade ago. Here's what I'm talking about. So it's July 2013. The Model S doesn't really exist yet or is barely coming into fruition. Tesla is not the giant uh, behemoth of a company it is today. They're not making robots or cyber taxis. Elon Musk is not involved in the government or anything like that. And they host this event. And what they do is they show a video of a person in a gas car going up to a gas pump 
and they compare it real time, live, like actually happening, not some simulation in front of a live audience, and they set a timer to show how long this new ability to charge your EV, your Tesla Model S from zero to 100% actually takes. And what's happening, you can kind of see it underneath the car, is it's swapping out the battery. So this was an automated battery swap technology that Tesla demoed in 2013, 12 years ago as of this recording, or just almost 12 years ago. So this way you could essentially just recharge your battery from zero to 100% in 90 seconds, more or less. In fact, I think they even do multiple cars in the time that this guy is waiting to charge his, uh, or to refuel his Audi here, uh, which shout out to Audi for all the branding they're getting in this video. But yeah, essentially that's it. It was just about, yeah, a minute 33, and the car has a brand new battery and is off and running. This may sort of seem like, you know, science fiction, like it's not real, but it was demoed by Tesla all the way back then. And then for some reason they abandoned it, but over in China, another company that sort of copied a lot of what Tesla has done, which they encouraged at the time, is NIO. And they just in December 2024 completed their 60 millionth battery swap service. And they have thousands of stations all over China. Yes, you pull into them, it takes your battery out, it puts a new one in, and it's completely automated. In fact, it actually pulls itself back in to the station when you get there so you don't even have to drive it in carefully. It does all the thing entirely automated, self-driving, completely automated swap of your battery in uh, just a few minutes there. So this is a real technology. This isn't some fantasy that you know somebody made up and did a, a, a CGI rendering of. This is like a real thing that exists in a very big country with millions of EVs being sold each year. To me, that is the real right way to solve this problem. I mean, it is super convenient. It works very quickly. And in fact, there was a time not too long ago when uh, Neo was upgrading the battery packs, meaning they made some advancements in the ed density or the chemistry of the batteries, and then they just started putting them in there. So now you could go in, and now you even have more range than you had before. I mean, this to me is the easiest and simplest way to solve this problem. And it doesn't put an extra strain on the grid because these guys can just charge up at whatever pace they need to, right? Unless you have a real busy station, it's not like you need megawatts of actual electricity coming in to charge these up super fast. So it's a grim day for the anti-EV crowd because of the facts here just don't care about their feelings. And remember, without data, you're just another person with an opinion, and we don't need more of those on the internet. Members, if you want, I'll be backstage chatting about this in the next five minutes. If you're not a member yet, consider joining using the join button down below. And that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you back here next time.